Hey everyone, David here coming to you live from a hotel room because this week I was actually stationed in a uh, city to do this thing for work. Uh, it's called induction. It's pretty much like a sales type of seminar. It's to learn some information, uh, some networking skills, how to sell better, how to please the customer better, all that good stuff. Anyways, it's just general stuff. And because of that, I have to stay in a hotel for about four days or so. And it just happened to fall on the week that Solo, a Star Wars movie, or Star Wars story, I'm sorry, came out. But that did not prevent me from watching it. I managed to catch a Thursday night showing. And so now here, I managed to go out of my way to bring with me my camera, my microphone. And I don't give a shit worth. I'm going to be, even in a hotel room, I'm going to give you guys a really quick review on Solo, a Star Wars story. So just to recap, this is the movie that I think everybody anonymously agreed is 100% unnecessary because out of all the characters within the Star Wars mythology Solo or Han Solo in particular is the one that you just don't need a backstory on you don't need an origin story on the most captivating and most interesting part of that character is that you don't know that much about him when you first meet him on Tatooine and he tells all these big stories about making the castle run in 12 parsecs and blah 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 it was like interesting it was mesmerizing because you don't know if this guy's bullshitting or not especially because of how well you get acquainted with his personality and his partner Chewbacca and you go on this adventure with him in episode 4 New Hope and then running down to the original trilogy leading up to his closure in Force Awakens so now that that was kind of out of the way it's like okay cool we don't need to tackle that anymore but now they brought forward Solo as one of the one-off movies that you have in between this brand new trilogy and I think everybody from the get-go was like why do we need this and then word came out that this was probably one of the most problematic shoots within the acquisition of Disney of Lucasfilm by Disney where one after another there were problems going on on set the main actor needed an acting coach and then finally they fired Phil Lord and Chris Miller who were originally set to direct the film coming off of the hot successes like 21 Jump Street and the Lego movie and so Kathleen Kennedy kind of stepped up, hired Ron Howard to kind of overtake the film, and now here we are. Did the movie succeed after a very limited stint of marketing where three months ago we didn't even have a fucking trailer? It wasn't until Super Bowl that we got a trailer. Man, oh man, I was just so prepared to go into this movie thinking this is unnecessary. This is going to be the one thing that is going to be that rock bottom for Disney to hit to be like, you know what? This is what you need to avoid. And walking out of the film, I'm super, super disappointed in myself because I could not have fun with this. Once more trailers and TV spots and more marketing for the film and more of the Ron Howard and various other creators behind the film were starting to tell the story about how this is like a fun, adventurous heist film. It, that sounded really at home with what a Han Solo movie should be, but at the same time, I'm still thinking to myself like, how are you going to tie that in with this character who I'm simply just not seeing an awful lot of charisma from from the trailers and the posters? Every time I see an image of him, he looks uninterested and just worried and just like he doesn't belong in that setting. Well, over time, within the first 30 or so minutes of the movie, this guy won me over. I still think that there would have been some better candidates out there to play Han Solo, but Alden Ollerenreich, I think is his name, he pulled his own and by the end I'm like okay you know what you weren't the worst thing imaginable I actually kind of liked you like I said I still preferred some other people particularly the guy who played a younger Harrison Ford in that movie with Blake Lively I can't remember her I can't remember the name uh not Age of Ultron something I don't know but it, it was there where I recognized this actor and I'm like holy shit he really does like and kind of sounds like him but at the same time it's another to kind of embody that character with not only the way he dresses but the way he kind of pulls himself and I thought that Alden Reich he kind of pulled his own I actually think he wasn't that bad he wasn't spectacular but he, he was he was there and then what also kind of helped him kind of ground him within the way that the, the tone and the setting kind of feels for this movie are the characters around him that are actually quite interesting I will admit, slightly formulaic, you have a couple of characters that you can easily kind of represent them and attach them to other characters that Disney has been kind of being really good at within recent films. Let's just say that there's a particular character that the first person I thought about was Rocket Raccoon, and then there was another one that kind of reminded me of Gamora, so they kind of had a Guardians feel. 
but that's mainly because they managed to get the Guardians of the Galaxy movie out first. So if this had come forward, then maybe we would have been saying the same thing about Guardians with this movie. Like, oh, it's just trying to be solo. So I'll cut them some slack for there because it does feel like a slight cookie cutter. But at least it's a cookie cutter for a, a batter or a cookie mix that tastes really good. And it's actually rather substantial. And that's pretty much what they did with these characters where I'm like, I like these people and... When a couple of them bite the dust, unfortunately, I actually felt kind of bad. I was like, no, I I dug them. I, why, why? And the stakes were presented henceforth. Save for a couple characters that you know are going to proceed on for the rest of the Star Wars mythology. Two in particular, whether it be the, your main character, Han Solo, or then the scene stealer, of course, the one that everybody actually had a good feeling about when the first trailers came out, and that is Donald Glover as Lando Calrissian. Yeah, there was no way to kind of dodge around this one. He is awesome. There's moments where it really does feel like Billy Dee Williams went back in time to like the 1970s and came forward as a younger Lando Calrissian, and he just he just nailed it. He he was perfect as the role. It's like Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man once more, and he really, really kicked ass at it to the point where, yeah, I, I mean, it does sound like a money grab, but take my money. If you're going to make a Lando movie, just fucking do it. Just just get it over with like a band-aid. Take my money. And then you had a couple of other characters that weren't bad, but they were just kind of there because, you know, the movie kind of needed, whether it be a romance in Amelia Clark's character or a bad guy in Paul Bettany's character, they weren't anything special but they got the job done if that makes kind of any sense so that's kind of a compliment and kind of a bad thing in and of themselves and i guess that's like i said uh, an embodiment of what the movie really is because despite being good with its very fun and adventurous tone that actually made me go wow I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time watching these characters try to pull off the ultimate heist, going through the galaxy from planet to planet, interacting with all these characters, most of which are comprised of practical effects. Especially within the first five minutes or so, we get introduced to our first big alien creature that's done with practical effects, and I'm like, wow, this is bringing me back to Empire in a really good way, That, but at the same time, it's not a 100% direct callback, and I appreciate that along with the the way that the tone is really set with that adventurous field where you got a good balance of humor and action sequences that just kind of sucked me in and kind of made me forget that I was in a theater and that's always good which is really weird that that kind of juxtaposes with how dark this movie is and by dark I don't necessarily mean tone I mean literally technically dark I don't know if it's my movie theater or maybe it was Ron Howard's direction to tell the cinematographer to just kind of mute all the colors but there were just certain shots where I'm losing a little bit of the detail, especially when you bring forward a beauty like the Millennium Falcon on screen in its prime, where it doesn't have the grime and the dirt, it looks pristine, I want to be able to see it. And you do a couple of t uh, times, but when you start to get into some really involved action sequences, some of which may or may not involve the famous Castle, castle Run, then you really want to get capture every little bit of the detail. And I was slightly struggling with a few of the visuals here on a on a color direction, an art direction level. Yeah, let's just say that if you're one of those people that were really upset about how muted some of the more recent Marvel movies have been, whether it be Doctor Strange or most infamously Captain America Civil War, you might feel triggered by this movie. And even though this is a one-off that happens to entail both Han Solo and his origin story and how he made Chewbacca and how they formed this partnership that... Uh, you know, again, didn't feel necessary to kind of extrapolate from, but you can't help but feel just a little bit of warmth when they do finally kind of bring themselves into their setting, whether it be getting into the shenanigans that they get into, or more importantly, once they step foot into that Millennium Falcon, it's just a moment that I just can't describe to you. Combined with the music, I'm like, fuck, I hate you guys. I hate you guys for kind of sucking me in here with the nostalgia, but unfortunately... I'm sad to report to you that it kind of works. It, it, I, I wish that it didn't be, to be a contrarian, but it works. And then later on, there's a couple of little Easter eggs for big Star Wars fans. Nothing too hardcore. I think that this is one of the more sparse movies with Easter eggs or hints at the other movies, less lesser so than Rogue One. Save for one at the very end that, again, I wish I could get upset for its inclusion. 
I'm not excited about it at all. No. I don't need it. I don't need it. So yeah, I'm just pissed at Disney now. I'm pissed at Disney. I'm pissed at LucasArts because I really wanted to go against the grain with this film. But especially after hearing about what was happening with the troubled shoot. But now it makes me think, what exactly did Lord and Miller really create that was not hap that Kevin Kennedy was just not happy with and got them fired? It, could it have been a disaster under the helm? Because Ron Howard, being in the game for so long, he managed to take notice of what's been working with the recent Star Wars movies and what people kind of pay attention to and kind of gravitate towards and that he was able to kind of pull it all together at the very last second in terms of in filmmaking terms and was able to put together a really well balanced film I do think that it could use some technical touches whether it be the color correction or at least a better fleshing out of Solo's uh, performance whether it be with the main actor maybe somebody else could have done a slightly better job you always kind of want to strive for better performance or better you know, quality but what we got with is instead is a movie that sure I might not, not may not be in the rush to kind of watch a second time but I'm ultimately glad that I actually did so I'm going to be giving Solo a Star Wars story a very low 8 out of 10 an enjoyable picture one that if you're a Star Wars fan I say go ahead and check it out I still think it's an un unnecessary film but if you feel motivated to catch it this weekend, I say it's worth, well, the two hours. So if you guys have managed to catch Solo, a Star Wars story this weekend, please post in the comments below what you guys think. Are you guys a huge Star Wars fan? Big enough to watch this movie. Do you still think that it's an unnecessary film? Which spin-off film do you actually want to see? I know most of you are probably going to want to say Obi-Wan Kenobi, but... I think that if you manage to catch this film, there might be another contender to take that top spot for spinoff films. Not going to say any more than that. Please, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Make sure, make sure you like and share this video. And do not forget to subscribe for more reviews coming very soon. I actually got to get to bed because, once again, I have to wake up early in the morning for the last day of this training damn thing. And I just kind of want to get it over with because I hate waking up early. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Some person just made off with somebody's purse and you gotta go catch them and it's a little bit time sensitive but at least it gets the urgent feeling of being a superhero where you have to go take care of this random crime because random crime happens and they put it here in this game. And then some fucking kid loses his balloon. Be good now. What do we say? I'll never let my balloony go again. You were supposed to say thank you, you little shit. God damn it. <laughs> he just abandoned his child.